This is Jim Hoffman. I am pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Midtown Kansas City. It is Saturday, just a little bit before noon. It's time for our daily devotion. So jumping on our Facebook Live event so that folks might join in. I want to invite you to come and join us as well. We take a few moments to read some scripture, uh, read the upper room and devotion that's for the day. Take a couple minutes to ponder it, have a couple thoughts on it, and we close in prayer. If you join and you want to leave a comment, let me know you're here. That would be great. would love to say good morning to you. As folks do, I'll greet them. I've got some folks here already, actually. Hi, Jack. Good morning to you. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Glad you're both here today. Hi, Shirley. Good morning to you. Let's see. Hi, Stacy. Good morning. Kind of a moderate looking half gray Saturday going on out there. A little bit of clouds, but not too bad. Not very wind. Actually, I'm glad there's no wind at all. That's that's what usually makes it for me or breaks it is the wind. We'll wait just a little bit longer. See who all else joins. For those of you who are here, we're going to be reading out of First Peter chapter five. So if you want to find that pastoral letter, First Peter. So find Hebrews, James, and then 1 Peter, 2 Peter. We'll wait just a little bit longer. See if anybody else joins and signs in, says hello. Pardon my sniffles. Still have a little bit of that residual left over from my nice winter cold. Again, 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to be reading verses 1 to 10. Either I got on really early or folks are just a little tardy today. It's a nice enough Saturday. People could be busy as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First Peter chapter 5, reading verses 1 to 10. Therefore, I have a request for the elders among you. I ask this as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, and as one who shares in the glory that is about to be revealed. I urge the elders, like shepherds tend the flock of God among you. Watch over it. Don't shepherd because you must, but do it voluntarily for God. Don't shepherd greedily, but do it eagerly. Don't shepherd by ruling over those entrusted to your care, but become examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive an unfading crown of glory. In the same way, I urge you who are younger, accept the authority of the elders. And everyone, clothe yourselves with humility toward each other. God stands against the proud, but he gives favor to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under God's power so that he may raise you up in the last day. Throw all your anxiety onto him because he cares about you. Be clear headed. Keep alert. Your accuser, the devil, is on the prowl like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Do so in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the one who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore, empower, strengthen, and establish you. Our author is Charity M. Kirigurea, 
She is from Uganda, and she picked 1 Peter 5, 7 as the focus verse. Cast all your anxiety on God because God cares for you. And here's the thought that she shared for us today. While preparing to plant cassava, I had a clear tall grass from the plot. <laughs> Hang on a second. I, I misread that sentence. <laughs> While preparing to plant cassava, I had to clear tall grass from the plot of land. I decided to burn the partially green, partially dried grass. Because it was not a dry season, I thought this would be safe, but the fire burned much faster than I expected. I began to panic as the fire threatened to engulf the neighboring plots of land. Frantically, I threw sand on the fire to put it out. The smoke began to choke me. Then I remembered to call on the Lord. I prayed through the panic, Lord, help me. You always help me when I ask. Don't Please don't let this fire cross the boundaries. The fire eventually died down, and I lifted my hands and thanked God. Anxiety is a natural response to misfortune and danger. When we hold on to our anxiety and allow it to overwhelm us, fear may keep us from being able to think calmly or trust God. Today's verse reminds us that we can cast our fears on the Lord. In times of anxiety, we can trust that God who cares for us will move to help us solve some of our problems. Now, that's certainly one perspective of how God interacts in our world. I think um, some may uh, disagree with that. You know, we, we have a variety of different theological frameworks under which we, we operate. There are different ways in which we conceive how God is operating in the world. Some may think that God is there to rescue us when we have a problem and and God becomes that mighty hand that takes care of an unfortunate situation. Others of us, it may just simply be that, you know, in a time and a moment, we get lucky and our ingenuity works out. You know, you can, you can look at this person's situation in a couple of different ways. The one thing I think that we could all hang our hat on in this devotion, though, is, is the fact that God does not want us to be anxious and for anxiety to be our natural kind of response to things. Anxiety shows a lack of faith and, and a serious doubt maybe in, in what God has in mind and what God has planned. Now, it doesn't keep us, though, you know, if, if we run through life without any anxiety whatsoever, and with pure faith and, and no doubt, it's not going to keep us from any kind of harm in the world. It's not going to keep us from suffering the consequences of some choices and mistakes that we might make. We're still going to face those. But what I think um, what I think this might remind us of is the simple fact that we don't necessarily have to face everything in our lives alone. Actually, we can face most of our life, actually a lot of our life, with the fact that God is present with us. God gives us strength, the power of the Spirit. God empowers us to endure, to make it through the other side, no matter what transpires, good or bad. And that God has given us a community of people that will journey with us as well. I can't think of a person that I know at St. John's who has had to go through something traumatic all on their own. A death. A diagnosis. Maybe financial hardship, you know, things like that, a struggling relationship. Actually, I would I would say that, uh, you know, in each one of those situations and moments that are personal to you, and, and I know some of you have been through those, somebody from St. John's reached out to you to let you know that you didn't have to go through your trial and your tribulation all on your own. That they were willing to be there to support and care and love for you in whatever way they possibly could. And I think that's what the beauty of the scriptures are and the beauty of what, you know, what this author is writing to us is, is that we can cast all of our anxiety on God, knowing that God cares for us and that that care comes through the spirit that's with us. And that care comes through the people who are part of the community that we find ourselves engaged in. So when next time something comes up in your life, will you give over to it? Will you let anxiety and doubt and fear overwhelm you? 
Or will you be reminded of the words that you can cast all your fear and your anxiety upon God because God cares for you? And that you can reach out to those who are around you, your community of faith, the people that love and care for you and want to be a part of your life in meaningful ways. And know that you can lean on them and that they'll be a part of your journey in a powerful and profound way. I hope that, that when that moment comes, and, and it will, you know, each of us are going to face something in our future that, that's going to be tough for us. It's going to be traumatic for us. It's going to be hard for us to, to get through. And when it does happen, I hope you'll remember these words. Cast all your anxiety on God because God cares for you. Take an opportunity to lean on those that are part of your community of faith. Because in God's love and care, they'll be there for you. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Dear God, we ask that you help us to hear this lesson today, that in those moments where we can have anxiety, fear, and doubt, we can cast them upon you, knowing that you will give us the strength to endure whatever we face and that you are with us. We also ask that you send our friends and our community of faith. Help us to have the willingness to rely upon them, for they come to share your love in our lives. We are thankful for these and the many blessings that you have given us in Christ. Amen. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here today. It is a joy to have all of you always. Don't forget, worship tomorrow is at 1045. We'll be online. I'm looking forward to spending some time in worship with you. Um, Come and join us. Uh, We'll have that um, up on our Uh, Facebook page, YouTube page, and up on Christian World Media. That's our streaming site. If you um, are new to St. John's and you don't know how to access that, you can simply go to our website, which is www.stjohnsumc.org, or you can look for us here on Facebook. We'll stream it on our Facebook site as well. But I hope you'll come and join us for worship tomorrow, again, 1045. And then don't forget, starting on Monday, we'll be back to our time of 1145 for our devotion. So I hope you'll come and join me next week as well. God's grace and peace be with you on this beautiful Saturday. And I will look forward to visiting with all of you tomorrow for worship. Have a great day.